Now, we're going to turn our attention to special kinds of relations that have certain combinations of properties. Take, for example, this relation, where A, B, and C are all related to each other in both directions and themselves. E and D are both related to each other and themselves. And F is just related to itself. What properties does this relation have? This relation is reflexive because we can see that every vertex in the directed graph has a loop. Therefore, every element of the set is related to itself. It is symmetric because any time there is a relation between two elements, that relation also goes the other way. And it's also transitive because any time there's a walk between two elements, there's also the direct arrow between those two elements. You can check that for yourself, but consider the walk between A and C through B that means we also have the arrow from A to C. One of the visually striking things about this relation is the fact that we can clearly separate these little islands in the relation, such that there are no arrows crossing over the dividing lines. This kind of relation has a special name. They're called equivalence relations, and an equivalence relation is any relation that is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. The prototypical example is the relation given by the sentence x equals y on any set. Working with equalities in your algebra class, you've already seen that is reflexive, everything's equal to itself, symmetric, if x equals y, so does y equal x, and transitive, meaning that you can do substitutions when you're solving equations. Less common, are the relations generated by the statements the cardinality of x is equal to the cardinality of y on a family of sets. In other words, we call two sets equivalent if they have the same size. And earlier in these videos, we saw the relation of logical equivalence between two statements. If r is an equivalence relation on the set x, we define the equivalence class of the element x, denoted by brackets around the element x, to be the set of all y such that y is related to x in the equivalence relation. In our example from earlier, the equivalence class of A refers to the set A, B, C. Now A is just a representative of that class, so we could also refer to it using the brackets around B or using the brackets around C. The equivalence class of D is the set D, E and it may also be referred to as the equivalence class of the element E. Finally, the equivalence class of the element F is just the set containing the element F.